In this video, we are gonna share with you how to find product market fit for a brand new product or service that you are selling. So whether you're a coach, consultant, SaaS company, and you're starting out, maybe you don't have many customers quite yet, and you're still looking for the proper way to sell your product and service, we're gonna show you exactly the process and methodology that you can go through to actually do that. And best of all, I've done it in the past for other companies, and now I'm actually doing it once again for my NFT agency. So this is definitely fresh off my mind, and I'm gonna share you some of the best secrets and methodology with you today. Product market fit. So what does this mean exactly, right? So product market fit in my eyes, it's just saying like, hey, you have a product and service that people actually want. So a lot of times in the beginning, you have an idea of what people want, but you don't really know that they want it until they tell you. So the first step is like, you have to have a core idea of who your customer is. For example, let's say my ideal customer are going to be Web2 companies, and that's essentially companies that haven't integrated NFTs and crypto into their company quite yet. Those regular companies who are actively looking to do an NFT project, but just don't know how. So that's a pretty niche ideal customer. But what if we took it even one step further and said, my ideal customer is web two companies who are in the luxury business selling leather goods who want to move into NFTs. Now we're getting a lot more specific, right? So once you have that idea in mind, you have to kind of have like a core offer or idea of what you would sell them. Sometimes it's going to be helping them with development. Sometimes it's art. Sometimes it's marketing, depending on your skill sets, right? And so you can basically say, Say something like, hey, I do marketing to help that specific customer sell their NFT project. Now, the hard part here is that you might have an idea of what you think people want, but until you talk to them over the phone, you don't really know what they want. So in the beginning, you have to generate as many leads as possible, meaning how many phone calls can you get and how many times can you practice that offer? So the more times you pitch it to somebody, some people will say yes, some people will say no. For the people that did say yes, you really have to think about why did they say yes? How do we communicate that more better to the next guy? And for people that say no, no, you have to understand like, why did they say no? Are they not a good fit? Did I not explain it in a clear way? So whatever the case is, you have to go back to the drawing board, refine your pitch, and then do it again and again and again and again, right? So how many pitches does it take to actually nail down product market fit? Depending on the situation, sometimes it's 10, 20, 100, 1000, who knows, right? Just really depends on the industry. And especially if the industry is changing, you might even have to change your offer constantly just to meet the demands of the market. Every industry is going to be different. Obviously, the more legacy the industry, the slower it moves, but but NFTs and Web3 and all these things move extremely fast. So like whatever you have today might work, but two months later it may not work, right? So you always have to adapt to it. The name in the game is how many leads are you getting, right? So for us, we need to get more leads because I have an offer. I've sold it to a couple people, but then some people say no, some people say yes, and I need more practice and we need more revenue, right? And so in my situation, it's like, all right, how do we get more leads? So we look at our current customers that we currently have. We say, how do we get more of these guys? And then from there, either we create content to get them to come to us, or possibly we reach out to them, try to see if they are interested in NFTs. Obviously, if you reach out to somebody, you're going to get a lot more no's and then you don't even know if they are actually interested in an NFT project. But if you are able to get them inbound, it's a lot easier because they're already interested in you, right? We're trying different strategies for lead generation and both processes do take a while, but we're definitely on the right path in that we already have customers. Product market fit. All you have to think about is these steps. Number one, how many meetings are you getting? Number two, how many deals are closing? Number three, how many clients are happy, right? So most people are stuck on the beginning, the leads. I would say that when once you have a couple leads, you really need to think like, are you able to scale that, right? For us, for example, our clients that come for the NFT agency side, they all have been inbound, meaning that they've seen me on Twitter, they've seen my YouTube channel, The Parallax, and they reach out to me directly, whether it's Twitter, Discord, and now we actually build a website so we can properly capture the lead, but they come to us, right? So we know that as long as we create amazing content, we let people know what we're doing, there's gonna be enough people who are watching our content that eventually will want to work with us because there are a lot of companies and executives that watch our YouTube channel channel. For us, if we just focus on building a brand and creating content, and then a lot of people have very nice things to say about us. So that's a very powerful word of mouth. We don't necessarily have to focus heavily on outbound because it's not necessary if people are coming to you, right? Granted, we have a whole content team. I've been doing this for years. I have a lot of experience. You know, I've been making YouTube videos for a while. That's my specific advantage that I personally use for lead generation. For people who are, let's say, trying to compete directly against me, I doubt that they're going to create the team that I have in order to do what I'm doing. For you, you really have to take a real hard look on what assets you have, what people you have on your team, what skills you have, because not everybody has the luxury of a content team that pumps out, you know, YouTube videos every day. If that's the case, you have to think, okay, do you need to send cold emails? Do you need to hit people up on LinkedIn? Do you yourself need to do it? Do you need to hire somebody or someone in your team can do it? Essentially just look at what you have. And then when one thing starts working and it works once, twice, three times and more and more, just think about how do you scale that, right? Before adding more channels,
channels, what I would say is just juice up the channel that you have, try to max it out because that's probably the lowest hanging fruit. If that's working and you just cannot think of a way to max it out even further, then start thinking about other channels. But if you're trying to catch two rabbits at the same time, usually you're not gonna catch anything. Another question that people have is, when should I create more products and services? Now, I'm not necessarily an expert when it comes to creating products and services. There are definitely people who have much more experience than me when it comes to this, right? From my understanding and my research and my own experience, I would say that if you have one product that can sell really well, there's a big enough audience that will actually buy this product or service, I would say just keep your life simple and just try to generate as much revenue as you can from that one product before you create a second. The reason is because once you have a selling mechanism, meaning that somebody comes to you, you get it on the phone, you sell them and things like that, all you really have to do is get more leads in your funnel and then you will generate more sales. If you create an entirely new different product, you have to create a new sales funnel, you have to create different ways to deliver on the thing that you promised. But if you have something that's already working and all you have to do is add more gas onto the fire, you know, some people say that you should get to a million dollars in revenue per year before you create a second product. I mean, people have different perspectives on that. And again, I'm not an expert when it comes to when you should be creating products. I think everyone has their own different strategies. Like you can technically have like 10 different products, each one doing 100K as well, right? But does that sound easy to manage? or having one simple product that really nails product market fit and just focusing on that thing and making sure you're the best in the world at it, that seems much more easier to me. It really just depends on where you're at, but I would always lean on the side of keeping things more simple. And of course, there's nothing wrong with having ideas and brainstorming about what if or what could be, but then when it really comes down to where you should spend your resources, having laser focus on the thing that you're the best at that solves the biggest problem probably will serve you best. And by the way, if you want to take your sales game to the next level, make sure to check out my masterclass, saleslegacy.com, where we have a one hour free training that will teach you everything you need to know when it comes to sales. Link is also in the description. So with that said, that is everything we have to cover for this video, and I will see you in the next one.